AMD might hit six gigahertz with their flagship processor. LastPass got hacked, and we got some details on the mid-tier 40 series cards. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is some more details coming out about the Ryzen 9 7950X, which, in case you don't remember, we're awaiting AMD's announcements of these CPUs tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time being live streamed over on their YouTube channel. We should actually be live here on the Hot News channel as well as over on my Twitch channel in case you wanna join us for just watching what AMD has for these CPUs together. But before we have that officially, we have some details coming out about the 7950X that the reported max frequency boost frequency of these chips could potentially be 5.85 gigahertz or nearly six gigahertz. This is coming out from leakers indicating that with a combination of precision boost overdrive and XFR, you could potentially hit that high of a clock speed with it potentially being 5.8 to 5.85 for most chips out there and that it's not the top bin spec. You might actually even be able to get higher than that if you have one of AMD's golden samples on this high-end chip. This is not the only report we've had on this. There's been indication in previous months that this chip should be 5.85 gigahertz on its F max clock frequency, which makes it considerably higher. And you can see here, there's even a CPU-Z screenshot, which could be potentially faked because it's just a, a picture, but it does seem to corroborate other indications that we've had coming out. But with that being conjoined with the information that we have, we have new benchmarks coming out about the 7950X as well, and it looks like it could potentially be up to 40% faster than the 5950X in multi-threaded performance based on this CPU Z benchmark and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the i9-13900K, which ekes it out ever so slightly, but you have to remember that the 7950X is only 16 cores, so the fact that it's competing with a 13900K, which is supposed to be 24 cores, is a very impressive achievement regardless. So we do see that it's trouncing all of the other chips that are on the lineup. This is gonna be a heavy hitting generation. It does look like Intel and AMD are gonna go toe to toe. It's really gonna come down to price point. It's really gonna come down to the price of overhauling your system as a whole, upgrading to DDR5, upgrading to a new motherboard like an X670E. We have to see what the whole package is gonna be because, I mean, it looks like they're coming out with fierce chips and I'm excited to see where this could potentially go. But AMD bringing the heat, if we get 40% faster 7950X at the flagship level and it costs the same amount, I'll be very excited about it. Let me know what you're hoping for for AMD to announce tonight, but I know what you probably didn't want to hear is, hey, that thing that everybody's telling you to maintain security on the internet, well, it got hacked, its source code got leaked. That'd probably be a bad thing to wake up to, and that's exactly what's happening with LastPass, and there's been a couple of other security vulnerabilities that have been taking place across the web when it comes to security it, things like Authy, which is a two-factor authentication app, has had some data leak as well. So this is just kind of adding on to that train. But LastPass confirming that an unauthorized party used a compromised developer account and they were able to take some proprietary LastPass technical information, is including parts of the source code in order to have details on how LastPass does things. However, LastPass does explain that whatever the hackers actually got should not actually affect any any security on your side, you do not need to be changing your password, your master password, or doing anything else. And they're saying that the source code is not actually going to affect the security of your stuff. And it's not the only company that says stuff like this. Microsoft has pointed out the fact that they don't rely on the source code for privacy reasons and security reasons because it can get leaked. It, there can be issues. So using that for security is likely going to be a bad time. Hopefully LastPass actually is true with that. I I mean, their entire business would go under if they had to say, hey, we, we, we just don't fundamentally work anymore because hackers figured out how to get bypassed on everything. It doesn't seem like that's the case right now. It's up to you whether or not to trust it, but in case you use them as a password manager, you should be aware of the ongoings there. And I wanna ongoing tell you about crypto stonks because it had a rough weekend. Bitcoin at the time of filming right now is down to 19,976 on Friday. It just took a tank tub bath 
down to Hades. It, it did not, it was up roughly $22,000, collapsing down below $20,000 right now. Ethereum also having a similar time. It's up half a percent right now at the time of filling to 1482, but having that collapse on Friday, Dogecoin roughly in the same spot at 6.3 cents. Not a ton of movement there, but in case you're looking at picking up an Intel GPU like the ARC A380 that just came available over on Newegg, well, now you can mine Ethereum Classic with it. That's being found out. The developer of Nanomine are making it so that there's support for the Intel Arc series of GPUs, and it's not great. At 75 watts, it, it does worse than everybody else when it comes to how much it can mine, which is not a whole lot. Looks like it's like 9.9 .9 to 10.2 mega hash per second, which is just a bad efficiency overall. Probably not a great idea. Also considering the fact that Ethereum's supposed to go proof of stake, mining is not gonna be a huge thing. This was mining Ethereum Classic as well. I mean, we'll see where this goes, but uh, in case you wanna mine on your Intel GPU, you can. And I wanna mine Reese for hot tech deals. My buddy, can I stick a pickaxe in you? Thanks, Reese. Very cool. Um, I I disagree with the notion that you as a person can be more than you are. Great, good stuff. But in case you want your T-Mobile service to be more than it is, uh, they're partnering up with Starlink. They had an event on Thursday indicating that Starlink and T-Mobile are going to be working together with Starlink's second gen satellites to bring coverage above and beyond where T-Mobile is going to take some of its frequency, allocate it to Starlink, and then make it so that you could potentially get coverage wherever you want in the world, except for it's only going to be within the US because of like international roaming reasons and like carriers having different issues with that. But essentially right now, this is gonna focus on SMS, MMS, and potentially even phone calls at some point where it's gonna be low data throughput. This is not supposed to be so that you can stream YouTube when you're in the middle of the desert somewhere. This is supposed to be just kind of a last mile. You would not get T-Mobile service here anyways. The fact that you now have texting to let people know where you are is huge. This could be great for rescue efforts. It could make it so that uh, I mean, there's coverage everywhere. You're not actually in a dead zone ever again. So T-Mobile CEO saying that this is actually working on all phones, especially since it's using T-Mobile's actual frequency. You don't have to update anything. And that this is, again, not gonna be used for anything besides texting and potentially voice calls because the connectivity per cell zone is not gonna be very high. So data streaming, not on the cards right now. But Elon Musk even saying that this could potentially be coming out to Tesla vehicles at some some point which for like emergency sms because you don't like you wouldn't be using the data when you're not i don't know like you can't text through the car so it's cool it should be rolling out sometime next year because starlink needs to update to their v2 satellites in order to make this happen but it's neat implementation of satellite internet and you like to see it happen and i'm personally kind of stoked for starlink because i have personal use case i have one coming in like today or tomorrow, and I'm very, uh, just stay tuned. We got plans for all of it. And Xbox has plans for your video games for you to be able to share them with people. It's coming out that Xbox is working on a Game Pass friends and family stuff where you can share it with your friends, you can share it with your families. You pay one subscription and then people can have access to the titles on the Game Pass library. So the preview for this is roughly 22 euro per month, whereas the regular version is 12.99 euro per month. So it is a bit more expensive expensive, but it's cheaper than buying two Game Pass subscriptions and then not being able to share them across it. I would actually love to see this because I could use this on my kids' computers, I could have my own, and then that way we can share on PC, we can play our own games, we don't have to share the same like cloud save. It this would be great. I would pay $25 a month for this. I'm already paying $15 a month for Game Pass Ultimate on PC to get access to games. I would pay an extra $10 a month. Uh, Xbox, you, you win my money. You're doing great stuff there. And Steam Deck doing some great stuff and they won my money as well. But they're here to let you know that it's not the end, my friends. They could potentially have a multi-generational product line. They released an ebook about the Steam Deck that you could check out at the link in the video description, but just kind of talking about some of the great stuff about the Steam Deck background on Valve and their philosophy around creating products, etc. But then also talking about the future. More Steam Decks, more Steam OS. Valve's been in communication with 
with other portable gaming console manufacturers in order to get SteamOS on their products, especially since Valve would get a cut of the Steam store. It makes tons of sense. They probably make more money on that than they do actually on the Steam Deck, but a Steam Deck 2 could be in the works. I know the thing that I've probably heard the most that people want with a Steam Deck 2 is going to be OLED screen. I've heard that constantly. Let me know what your suggestion for a Steam Deck 2 would be. What would you want to see in it? Valve wants to hear from you about this as well. So just communicate in the comments. Maybe they'll read this at some point. Who knows? I would also want to not be behind a generation by the time the product comes out to my door. That was probably the saddest thing about the Steam Deck is the fact that it's it's not on the latest Zen 3 processor, which is now already rolling out in other handhelds. I would have loved to gotten like a 6800U in the Steam Deck with an OLED screen. That'd be fantastical. But let me know your wish list down below in the comments. And Intel wishes you would find out more details about XESS or Zess. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. They go over that in this video, which you can watch in case you have 29 minutes to spare and you want the deep dive on the technology aspect of the super sampling technology Intel's gonna be bringing to their GPUs, essentially the Team Blue version of NVIDIA's DLSS. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you wanna check it out. But with their 13th gen processors, we now have a couple of indications of clock speed on the more affordable lineup like the 13400 and the 13500, which are supposed to be 10 core processors, hopefully coming in that $200, sub $200 price point. So on the 13500, we're looking at a turbo boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz and the 13400 is supposed to go up to 4.1. Again, with it having six performance cores and four efficiency cores, this would be a huge step up actually over the current generation 12400 and 12500. I'm excited to see where it goes, but there's kind of a mixed step up when it comes to the RTX 40 series in the mid tier, the 4060 and 4060 Ti getting some leaks on their benchmark performance. It looks like they do all right, the 4060 Ti having a time spike stream score of 8600 at 280 watts of power draw, which is not great. The 4060 hits roughly 6000 while drawing 235 watts. Again, not great. The 4060 Ti can actually outperform the 3080 when it comes to the time spike stream score. That 4060 performance comes in at 6000 points, which looks like it's equivalent to the 3060 Ti. So not necessarily a huge increase overall. It seems like this is gonna be a decent step up, a lot of power consumption. That seems like where the 40 series is going, but we've heard that being the rumor for like Nvidia's top tier stuff. And then like, as the months have gone by and we've gotten closer to launch, they've been like, oh no, it's less power now. It's less power now, it's less power now. Maybe it'll be less by the time these things launch a year from now. I don't know when they're coming out, but it'd probably be in 2023. But I won't see you that late. You can trust me to be here for you tomorrow for more hot tech news. That's gonna be about the AMD stuff because that's happening tonight, the official announcement. So tune in, love to see you there, bye.